Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to today's video. First things first, go ahead and hit that sub button, hit that like button, it helps out a ton. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Today we are covering Netcat. Um, a lot of people know Netcat, but a lot of questions I get on it are why do we use Netcat? Why don't you use something else? Netcat is, doesn't work for me, whatever. If you know how to use Netcat, it's extremely useful. It's also, the other big thing is a lot of network teams and things like that use InMap on their networks, so it's not uncommon to see Netcat in a enterprise environment. So what that means is we can live off the land, we can use it without having to actually download anything. So we basically take that attack surface, make it bigger, but also take our attack surface, so our footprint, if you will, so what we're actually trails we're leaving, and we narrow that down because we're not downloading any of our own tools. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, I'm just going to make a um, I'm just going to echo hi and just put it into a file real quick. We'll just say file.txt. doesn't really matter. Now we have a file. Now the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to transfer this file. I'm going to show you guys how to transfer the file. Um, so there's a couple ways to use Netcat. You can push pull files. You can make backdoor listeners. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can make relays. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff with Netcat. Today I'm just going to cover the basics. If you guys want to see a more in-depth video of what you can do, make sure you hit that comment button or leave a comment, whatever, and let me know what exactly specific details you want to see, and I'll do a, little, a lot more in-depth video. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So we got we created the file, echo, hide, file.txt. So now if we cat the file.txt, it should just say hi. Yep, and there we go. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and tell this, um, not this one, I'm sorry. We need to go ahead and tell this machine we want netcat or incat, as it's called on Windows, and we want to say we want to listen it doesn't really matter what port you put. We'll put 1111. Just something simple. Doesn't really matter. And we're going to say we're listening and we want to go ahead and name our file received.txt. So what this is, is this is going to listen. And when a file is pushed to it, it's going to take it and name it received.txt. So we hit enter. Yep, we'll allow access. And it's just because I didn't open a command prompt with, um, and you can see it's sitting there listening, right? So that's perfect. So now that it's listening, we can just say, okay, you're listening. Let's go ahead and send you the file. So now our IP address is 192.168.49.130. So now we're saying, hey, Netcat, at this IP, send, and we're going to say send, right? So now it looks backwards, right? Because this looks like you're receiving it, but this is actually pushing it to it okay so there's a push and there's a pull in that cat and it looks backwards but it's not now one way to keep this um keep this uh in line is let's say you have this one going that way in in you can see my cursor here on the listener the other one always has to go the other way because you can never have two things going the same way the little um not arrows but you know what i mean the greater than less than signs so we have to say, okay, we're going to push you the file, and now we named ours file.txt. So we'll just go ahead, and then you hit enter. Uh, no ports. To, I didn't specify the port, which is fine. We want 1111. And you can see it's being pushed, 192.168.49.130. And hopefully ours is using the right, um, the right thing here. Okay, and there's nothing that's going to tell you that it worked, right? So we have to go ahead and hit Control C, and you can see it ended it, so it did connect. There's nothing that's going to say it worked, so we hit LS, uh, dir, because we're on Windows, and you can see there's receive.txt. So now if we go ahead and open up this and go to C users text, or test, excuse me, let me go to C. This VM is extremely slow, this evaluation copy, so test you can see we have a received.txt if we open it it says hi so we just pushed a file to ourselves very quickly very simply right and i know that you guys are thinking okay that's whatever but think about it from a hacker's standpoint i just connected to your machine and i'm sending files back to my machine and you have no idea it's happening because it's happening command line it's happening on the back end and i'm using tools that are already built into your system and you don't realize it so think of it that way you're already pretty much giving me free 
file access. Now let's go ahead and create a Linux backdoor. Now this is what a lot of hackers um, you guys have probably seen and you guys are familiar with. So remember, this is the listening one. So we're always going to say netcat. The L is always going to be listening. And we'll just do the same port, 1111, right? And then we'll say we want E and actually, you know what? Just because we always see it this way, you always see the Linux machine taking over. I want to show you guys the other way. So we're going to say netcat and we'll do the port 1111. And then we're going to say E for the execute bin bash. So I want netcat to execute bin bash, which is a shell, right? And we're going to say, go ahead and hit enter. And now our IP here is 192.168.49.128. So we want to say here, netcat 192.168.49. What did I say? 49.128. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and say 1111 for the port. And we're just going to say enter and watch what happens. And I didn't. You got to remember on Windows, it's in cat, not in C. Okay. And you can see now open SSH or you can see I have a shell here. If I hit LS, I'm getting covenant desktop dot files dot text. That's the file we just created. So I'm getting, I have a full shell right now on my Windows machine from a command line, which is it's not normally what we see. We normally see it the other way, right? We normally see, Hey, we, we have a Lin Linux machine that's taking over a Windows machine, but look with netcat. I can use this Windows machine to take over another machine. Now, tell me why this would be important. Because let's say I'm in their network, right? I got a shell into their network and I'm use, I'm a, on their Windows machine now. Well, now I have a tool that's already built in here that I can start pivoting to other um, systems, right? So what I mean by that is, and I'll show you, is I can show you guys a relay here. And what a relay is going to do is basically a relay is just going to use this as a jumping off point, if you will. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So, all right, guys, welcome back. Sorry, the uh, thing was messing up. I don't know what was going on. So basically, and this has got to go back down. There we go. Okay, so to do, we're going to do a relay, but I don't I don't have it all set up because we're doing a 10-minute tutorial, so I don't have time to um, show you guys the before and after. But basically what a relay is going to do is allow you to pivot from inside of a network. So what I mean by that is let's say you try to get inside into an internal host. You can't get it. That's fine. But then you can get into one of the machines in the DMZ that can talk to the internal host. Well, now you have a spot, you have a middleman that you can control in the DMZ that you can now send commands through. So what we have to do for this, and like I said, if you guys want a, or a more in-depth tutorial, let me know. I'm just showing you how. I'm not going to talk too much about it because of the fact this is a 10-minute tutorial. Now, if you want to see more, let me know. So now, first thing we're going to do is make FIFO. This is making a file temporary file but it's really a pipe and i'll show you what i mean so we're just named named pipe and it doesn't really matter what you name it okay so now if you see ls whoops tech l named pipe you can see now we have this named pipe file and what it is is a pipe file so what you'll see what i mean by that so what it means is it's a file but it transmits data okay and it's so it's allowing us to basically you have to do this because otherwise your traffic only would go one way because netcat's only listening one way so the the pipe allows it to listen back it gives it a back path okay so what we'll do we'll go ahead and say on here netcat tech listen so we want to listen on here we want to listen on port uh we'll just do 444 it doesn't really matter and i'm trying to go fast because i know i'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes so we'll just say now you can see we have to use this name pipe file because otherwise it's not going to have a way back it'll just go one way so we want to be able to see what we send you know if we want a file to come back or a ls command or something we need it to come back so now we send we put an actual pipe in there netcat and we're gonna say 192 that's what i was looking at is the ip and i already forgot it 192.168.49.130 okay so there's our host then here we're gonna say named pipe okay so what we're doing here and i don't have the third host set up so this you won't see it but what we're doing here is we're saying netcat listen on pipe are on port 4444 okay and we're using this named pipe which is a file to transmit data back and forth right when i say that this is one channel of traffic so you have one channel so you have outgoing and then you have to have incoming right 
So you have to have both channels. Name pipe is acting as one and netcat's acting as one. So you see here we have netcat acting as one and we're saying, hey, connect to this. But this name pipe has to be in both spots because it has to, and you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter, it's just a file. But it has to be in place because when I send a command, let's say I send an ls command, I need this here to actually return the results of the ls command, right? Otherwise, you're not gonna get anything, right? So what we can do is we can say, boom, enter. No ports to connect to, that's because I didn't set it up over here, which is fine. But what you do is you set it up over here because you would set this up on your actual um, whatever third middleman machine you have. Um, and then from there, you set this up, and now I can pivot. So now if I run a command on – so this would be your listener, right? But you would have another machine over here that is your attack machine, and then you have another machine over here that's in you know, the machine that you want to attack. So you would take this, run, and then you connect to this here. And then you would actually run commands through this middleman because what people don't realize, and this is why I stress a lot on experience um, with enterprise systems before you start doing advanced level stuff, people don't realize that a DMZ may still have and probably does have connections internally. So you're saying, hey, I'm, I'm scanning and I'm doing in-map scans. And I know these hosts are up, but I'm getting blocked by the firewall every single time. Well, what's to say we can't use the DMZ machine to scan internally because it has access to talk to them through the firewall and we don't. So this is the command that you'll need to actually do that. Now, I know a lot of you are going to complain and say that, hey, you're not actually showing us it. You're not showing us how. Well, there's two reasons. One, it's a 10-minute tutorial. I'm trying to keep it under that. And I want you guys to be able to use Netcat and not necessarily be an expert in it. Two is because this is... Um, this starts getting more in an advanced level. And if I just give you guys the commands, even if I showed you exactly how and everything, you would still probably get messed up unless you're an advanced, more advanced or mid to advanced level person. Um, and so if you wanna see a more advanced level tutorial, hit the comment below and I will actually set it all up and show you guys and do like a longer video. But I don't want to just tell you guys, click these buttons, it works, boom. I want you to understand what you're doing and start looking at this command and start really, or reading and researching about pipes before you start doing this because of the fact that you need to know what you're doing. You need to. And so that's part of the reasons why I, in a lot of my videos you guys say you don't show every little detail. There's a reason. It's because I'm not trying to train. I, for every good person that messages me and says, hey, thank you, hey, I'd like to learn this, there's 50 to 100 people saying, hey, I want to hack my friend. I want to hack this guy. I want to hack the government. I want to do something. So show me how to do it. So because of that reason, I consciously do not show every step because a good a good hacker or even a mediocre mid-level hacker can take this and figure it out because they know how to troubleshoot. They know how to do things. So that's what I want them to do. But I don't want to teach people that don't know anything about it how to be malicious so if you do want to see it and you're even if you're entry level and you do want to learn more about it let me know in the comments and i'll make that video but i don't want to just make it and then have someone that doesn't that just has malicious intent click on a 10 minute video watch 10 minutes and boom they can do it i want them to have to sit through a 30 40 minute video of mine and le learn how it works that's what i want to make them do because most script kitties won't watch that video but if you're actually interested and you actually care, you will watch the video. So let me know in the bef below. I'm just explaining why I don't give you guys every single piece of the puzzle because, number one, I want you guys to learn it, and that, that requires you to go try it. Number two, I want you guys to fully be able to do this yourself before you start doing these in real world. So hopefully that helps you guys. Let me know what you guys think, and hope you guys have a great day.